Hello everybody. Today we are going to be doing a cartridge review of Browning slash Winchester's new 6.8 Western. So we have a Browning X-Bolt chambered in a 6A Western. We're going to take on the range and we're also going to jump into the computer here um, and look up some ballistics of the 6A Western because Winchester's and Browning is touting this gun as the all-around big game Western hunting rifle. So we're going to look into some specs of the gun, take it out on the range, shoot it a couple times, check out the recoil and just how it performs. Um, and then I'm going to give my opinion and my view of the 6.8 Western. Um, and spoiler alert, um, I really love this caliber and it's probably going to be my all around Western hunting gun. I spent a lot of research uh, when I was looking to purchase my next Western hunting rifle. Um, and I really wanted to steer towards some of the new modern cartridges that were coming out. Um, so I want to compare the 6.8 Western to um, some of the newer calibers coming out from Nosler, like the 26 and the 28 Nosler, as well as some of the PRC cartridges like the 6.5 PRC and the 7 PRC. Um, we will also look into some of the more traditional hunting rounds like the 30 odd 6 and how it compares to that, the 300 Win Mag, a 308, and a 7 Rim Mag. Um, so first things first, let's jump right into the computer here and pull up some of the specs and some of the ballistics and what a 6.8 Western is and just kind of how it came to be. Let's hop in. Here's, um, official website just to see what it tells us about the 6.8 Western straight from the source. So we're going to look at that right now. So we'll see here, when we look down, Winchester claims that this is their ultimate all-around long-range hunting cartridge. Um, it is the very first thing they say about this cartridge. Now, what is a 6.8 Western and what does it promise to do? Um, the first thing, a 6.8 Western essentially, and it's going to tell us right here, is a 270 Winchester short magnum. Um, that case has been shortened to make room for new, longer, heavier, high ballistic coefficient bolts. Um, in a nutshell, what that means is it's just a 270 that's been souped up, 270 on steroids, if you will, um, that can send heavier bullets down range, and that's going to give you a ballistic advantage as long as you're able to send it down range at the same or higher speeds. Um, we'll talk about a lot about ballistics here in a minute. I'm not going to claim to be a ballistics expert. Um, I did study physics for four years. And what I can tell you is you want to be able to send the heaviest projectile down range as fast and accurate as possible. That is the basics of ballistics. Um, a baseball hitting you in the ribs at 100 miles per hour has a lot more energy than a wiffle ball hitting you in the ribs at 100 miles per hour. The baseball just has more mass than a plastic wiffle ball, and that is ballistics and energy downrange in a nutshell. So that is what a six-point Western is. Now, why choose the 6.8 Western? So Winchester claims this impressive, long-range, accurate, low-recoil rifle with staggering knockdown power um, for long-range shooting and hunting. And it even says after that's a lot to promise in any caliber, but with bullets approaching 30 caliber weights and 165 grains, up with higher ballistic coefficients being offered, the 6.8 Western is engineered to deliver magnum performance with milder recoil. Um, and that is their claim to fame. You get as much energy down range as these big guns like a 300 Win Mag without all the recoil. Um, the 6.8 Western is a short action rifle. What does that mean? Essentially, it just means you can make a lighter weight rifle because the shorter action. Um, there's gonna be advantages with faster cycling, but truth be told, when you're shooting big game up in the mountains, cycling, how fast you can cycle is usually not one of my main priorities when I'm hunting. Um, I'm not shooting at ducks flying by. I don't have to worry about, you know, rechambering and getting on, say, another bull. Um, 
you only really have to worry about that for follow-up shots and you want to take your time anyway. So the short action is a big plus, but it's but it's mostly just because you can get a, sh a lighter rifle and a shorter barrel, which is good for mountain hunting. Now, to the actual ballistics, how does it stack up to other big game cartridges? Browning said that it's going to bring as much energy downrange as a Magnum, and here is the numbers that they give us. So, they're going to compare it to a 7mm rim mag, a 300 wind mag, and a 300 wind short mag. All three of these cartridges are all hailed by elk hunters as more than enough gun um, to take elk at long ranges, and these are three very, very popular rounds for elk hunting. Um, so for a starting point or jumping off point, these are good um, cartridges to compare the 6.8 Western to. Um, we'll look just right here first at the 300 Win Mag, which is kind of the king magnum in my opinion. Um, and it's also what I have the most experience with. The 300 Win Mag can essentially kill pretty much anything in the world. Um, it's big enough and powerful enough, and it brings enough energy at the point of impact that you're not going to find pretty much anything that you can't bring down short of maybe an elephant. So on a 180 grain round out of a 300 wind mag is bringing 1,754 feet pounds of energy at 500 yards. Now, this 500 yard benchmark is what we are going to use essentially to compare all the calibers from here on out just because that is that is a long range shot that is most likely past the limits of most average hunters um, but just for comparison purposes since we're looking at these guns as long range rifles um, a 500 yard shot we want to make sure these guns are capable of doing it and possibly even further so if you're not familiar with energy at the point of impact, the general rule of thumb is you want at least 1,500 feet pounds at impact. That will allow the bullet to behave the way it's supposed to behave once it hits the animal. Anything less than that, and there's not enough energy and velocity at the animal to properly um, essentially mushroom your, you know, whatever you're shooting. So 1,500 pounds is going to be our baseline. So once we hit that baseline, that's just essentially what we'll call our effective range. And what you can see here is with the 7 rim mag, at 500 yards, that is about your effective lethal range on big game. Um, you see the 300 wind mag, the 300 wind short mag, which are both big 30 caliber rounds. These are both hitting still very hard at that long distance of 500 yards. And they're doing it pretty flat. Um, 39 inch draw for a 300 wind mag, 37 for the short mag. Um, but with all that energy, you'll see here, you are getting a lot of energy pushed back into your shoulder, um, close to 30 pounds of recoil, um, which is a lot. As someone who has shot a 300 wind mag, and it was a pretty heavy gun, I can tell you that it will absolutely abuse your shoulder. Um, it is just not a fun gun to shoot. Um, obviously, when you're hunting, um, you're only going to shoot once, hopefully. And that is kind of what everyone's always said traditionally about the 300 Win Mag is, well, you just kind of put up with it on the range because when you're hunting, hopefully you only need one shot and you're not really going to notice it when you got a bull that you're looking at down your skull. Um, however, when you're at the range or if you just like to shoot for fun it's really too much recoil just to go out um, and spend the day shooting now when we compare that to the 6.8 western and we're going to compare it to the 165 grain acubons because um, that is held as their long range round we'll see that it hits with 856 pounds pressure which is more than the 300 wind mag with the acubons. Um, so you're actually getting more energy at 500 yards than the King 300 wind mag, which is just insane that you could do that with only 24 
6.5 pounds of recoil. Now, when I went on the range with the 6.8 Western and I shot it, I can tell you right now, um, I wasn't sure that what the difference was going to be between 30 pounds of recoil and 24 pounds of recoil. And what I can tell you is it was substantially noticeable. Um, they claim that it is 16% less recoil, but truthfully, if I had to guess, I would have said it was much more. The 6A Western that I was shooting in the Browning X Bolt Speed was a six and a half pound rifle compared to the seven and a half pound rifle of the 300 Win Mag, and the 6A Western just didn't feel like it had hardly any recoil at all. Um, maybe that's because I'm used to shooting the bigger Magnums, but for me, the 6A Western was just a much more pleasant gun to shoot. I didn't notice the recoil at all. Um, it was so less so that I would say um, it would be comfortable for most kids and women to shoot as well. Um, it just was a very nice shooting gun. Um, so now that we see here the 6.8 Westerns um, comparison to the 300 Win Mag and the 7 Rim Mag, Winchester does good to give us a few things to compare it to, but it doesn't give us a full list of calipers that we can compare it to. So we're going to look into it a little more extensively here. And this is a standard ballistics chart straight from Hornady. Um, so these are going to be Hornady rounds. Um, whether you're shooting Hornady, Nosler, Federal, Browning, it's all pretty comparable. So this should just give us a good comparison to what we should expect when shooting a 6.8 Western versus some of these rounds. So looking here, um, the 308, which is um, an all-around great rifle for hunting, we'll see here that when we start to look at energy, um, and we're going to look at 500 yards again, you'll see that it falls below our 1,500-pound energy threshold. So at 500 yards, a 308 um, just doesn't send enough energy downrange to effectively hunt big game like elk. For the most part, there are some rounds here. Um, it looks like it sends a lot of energy down range, but you have to be careful because some of this match rounds are actually competition rounds and don't have great ballistics when actually entering an animal. Um, the 30 odd six, we can see here energy for those. Uh, while some rounds do get close to our threshold to shoot at long ranges, you'll see they don't come close to the 1800 pounds of energy that the 6.8 Western sends down. So the 6.8 Western is still sending more energy downrange than a 308. It's sending more energy downrange than a 30-06. Um, and when we really scroll down, you'll see that energy-wise, if you just follow the numbers here at 500 yards, you really don't start to get anything comparable to the 6.8 Western and what Browning claims it can send down range until you get into the big magnums, which is what Browning's claim is to begin with, that it's sending just as much energy as these big holder magnums. Um, we can go up and look at some other rounds. Um, here's the seven rim mag, um, which is an awesome caliber. Um, and at 500 yards, it is Still sending a lot of energy downrange, but again, it's not matching the 6.8 Western. And then you could see the 270 here, which is what the 6.8 Western is based off of. And you could see again, the energy downrange just isn't the same. It just doesn't compare to the Western. Um, up here, everyone's favorite gun, the 6.5 Creedmoor. We'll see at 500 yards, which is going to be this column here. Um, it's not even close to sending enough energy down range. Now, there are other things that are important than just the point of impact energy down range, such as muzzle velocity, drop, and things like that. Um, but what we can see here from these charts is essentially most of the older or traditional rounds don't send the same energy down range as a 6.8 Western. So you might say, okay, then the 6.8 Western must be um, the next best hunting rifle. However, Browning and Winchester are not the only people making new modern calibers. So we need to compare it to some of the newer 
modern calibers that are also coming out because it just wouldn't be fair to say the 6.8 Western sends more energy downrange than a 7 rim mag or a 30 odd 6 without also comparing it to, and we'll pull some of these up. Here again, here's a newer modern round, the 6.5 Creedmoor. We're not going to spend much time on the Creedmoor because we just shown that it doesn't send very much energy and it's not in a very effective big game hunting round for out west. Um, when you look here at the speed, there should be an energy table here. Right here, we'll click energy. Ah, here we go. We'll see the energy downrange. And right about here would be our threshold really falls off once you get past 200 yards. So a 6.5 West or a 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm sorry, just it doesn't bring much energy at all downrange. Um, if you know your limitations, you know, maybe two or 300 yards when you're hunting deer will be enough. But when you're looking at big game out west that are just tougher and taking longer shots, the 6.5 Treadmore just really doesn't hold a candle to even the traditional hunting rounds like a 30 odd 6, um, the 7 rim mag, or it definitely isn't close energy wise to any of the magnum cartridges. So, so what new modern rounds do hold candles or are most similar to the 6A Western? And in my opinion, that's going to be um, Hornady's 7mm PRC. This is a brand new cartridge. Um, and I personally really like it um, just from the ballistics that it tells us. Um, muzzle velocity. And this is going to be for 160 grain uh, rounds, so similar to what we're comparing with a 6.8 Western. When we look here at muzzle velocity at 3,000 feet per second, jumping back to the Western, you're going to see that it is essentially very comparable. 2970 versus 3,000. We'll jump back here. Um, but if you were to go through here, you'll see at 500 yards, it's essentially sending the same energy downrange as the 6.8 Western. It's sending it with essentially the exact same trajectory. Um, so ballistically, they're almost equals on paper. Um, that, of course, is going to you know, depend on what you're shooting rifle-wise and if you reload yourself. But just out of the box and what you're going to read on the back of a box that you buy, these rounds are going to be very, very similar. And I can even see the 7 millimeter PRC becoming very, very popular. Um, the one reason that I steered away from the 7mm PRC was pretty simple. During my test to go look for ammunition, excuse me, at the store, I just couldn't find ammunition at the store. Um, I went to Bass Pro, Cabela's, Shields, Sportsman's, all the big box stores, and I could not find 7mm PRC rounds. Um, I really couldn't find 6.5 PRC rounds either. Um, Hornady just is not putting out enough ammunition for the rifle itself. Um, there's also issues with finding guns that are chambered in the 7 PRC. Now, again, this is an even newer cartridge than the 6A Western, so it is to be expected that it's going to be hard to find guns in this caliber. However, what I can tell you is the 6A Western is also a new rifle, but when I went to the store, I was able to find ammunition at every single store. Um, and when I went to the Bass Pro Shop in downtown Denver, they had over 40 boxes of 6A Western rounds in essentially every box that's being manufactured. Um, Winchester and Browning are the only ones making boxes, so that kind of limits what you can buy but I could buy 165, 162 grain, 170 grain. Essentially, I could buy whatever I wanted in the 6A Western, and I could buy as much as I wanted. Um, the Sportsman's Warehouse um, down near Colorado Springs, they had 6A Western rounds. Basically, every box store I went to had 6A Western boxes. Um, so that is why I chose the 6A Western over the 7 PRC. It just came down to availability of ammo.
because both of these rounds are awesome. Um, I would knock anyone who could find or build a 7 PRC gun and can either reload their own ammo or find enough ammo to shoot. That's just not me. I am someone who, like I said, buys factory ammo and shoots factory ammo. For me, it's just easier and I don't have the time to reload and I really don't have um, the want or desire to reload. So the 6.8 Western 7 PRC for me sit very, very close. Um, I give the edge to the 6.8 Western just because as of now, you can find more ammo in it. Um, moving on to some other calibers, um, the 28 Nosler. Now the 28 Nosler is going to be for one, a very heavy hitting round. Um, this is going to be very comparable to um, the big magnums. It's going to send more energy downrange than even the 6.8 Western wheels we can see here on our ballistics charts. It's going to send more energy downrange. However, when you start to look at recoil, you'll see that the 28 Nosler has just as much, if not more, recoil than a 300 Win Mag than some of the other bigger magnums. So you are getting a lot of downrange energy, but you're still getting the recoil um, and the inefficiency of the big mag rounds. Um, so for me, there was no real advantage in the 28 Nosler over the 300 wind mags, um, you know, the 300 short mags, even the 300 PRC. There just wasn't any benefit in going with the 28 Nosler round because it's easier to find ammo in those traditional rounds. So why go with essentially the same gun with less ammo? Um, another really cool round um, that people look into is the 280 Ackley Improved. Um, the 280 Ackley Improved, I've spent a lot of time looking into um, this caliper as well. And when you look into ballistics, the ballistics of this is also really good. It doesn't hit quite as hard as the 6.8 Western, um, but all research I've done shows that recoil is pretty light um, and it's just a pretty cool round. The issue is you can't find very many guns chambered in it unless you're willing to build a custom rifle and you can almost never find ammo. I've actually never seen ammo in 280 Ackley Improved uh, and I've never seen a gun at a big box store chambered in 280 Ackley Improved either. I know Savage is making their new ultralight rifles and some 280 Ackley Improves, um, but they're just not real popular. Um, even though they are cool and people who reload um, are going to love it just because of how flat this thing shoots, it just didn't make sense for me as someone who wanted, for one, an affordable rifle, and for two, ammunition. Um, neither one of those things really um, was available in a 280 Ackley. So, all that said and done, it all comes back to the rifle I decided to purchase in a 6.8 Western. Um, you can see kind of how you can see kind of how my decision making came along and why I decided to go with the 6.8 Western. Um, truth be told, it's just a really cool modern caliper that sends a lot of energy down range, which is exactly what they claim for it to do. And when I took it on the range, I found it to be extremely easy to shoot, which was a big plus for me. Um, when it came to accuracy, I found the Winchester and Browning rounds um, to be accurate enough for me. I'm by no means a range junkie. I don't shoot competitively. I just, when I do get a rifle tag, which honestly isn't that often, but when I do, I usually will buy a few boxes, go to the range, make sure I feel real comfortable with my gun, and then I will go hunting. Um, so truth be told, showing my groups here, these were at three and 400 yards after I found zero on my rifle at 200 um, with a pretty steady 15 to 20 mile per hour wind. So me being able to put, you know, three or four shots within a four inch circle diameter was good enough for me. You at home um, probably shoot much better than me anyway and are going to have much better um, 
groupings. So the only real drawback I found with the 6.8 Western is just that you have to buy either a Winchester or a Browning rifle if you want an affordable um, gun. Um, I was okay with that. I looked at the Model 70. I looked at you know the Browning X bolts, and for me, I felt comfortable with Browning and Winchester, and I also felt comfortable shooting the Browning and Winchester um, long-range Acubox. Um, if Browning and Winchester is a turnoff for you, then a 6.8 Western probably isn't for you if you're not planning on building your own custom rifle and if you're not planning on reloading. Um, but for me, it met all of my requirements of having modern ballistics, being lightweight, low recoil, and plenty of ammunition. So um, I'd love to hear um, your opinion on the new 6.8 Western. I'd love to hear your opinion on the 7PRC and some of these other new rounds that are coming out and how you feel they compare um, to one another. Um, and also if you're just, you know, want to argue for the sake of arguing, I know that cartridge battles are really popular and everyone loves to argue about them. So feel free to comment your feelings, um, your disagreements, and then make sure you'd like and subscribe. This is going to be the end of the video. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was helpful for you on your next search for your next big game Western rifle.